Lesson 9.3c, Using Area to Solve Problems, Composite Figures. Three methods for finding the area of a composite figure are, you draw the figure on grid paper and count the squares, you actually count them. Second way is, we divide the composite figure into simpler shapes, find each area, then combine them for a total area. The third way would be to enclose the composite figure with a rectangle. We shade inside the rectangle, but not inside the figure itself. We find the area of each shaded part, subtract the total shaded area from the area of the rectangle. And we'll do this. We'll talk about this in the lesson. So this is from the last lesson. We'll need to use several different area formulas for each composite figure. And if you'd like to take a screenshot of this, you'll have all these area formulas in one nice little picture. So here's our first problem. Dave is laying sod grass in his backyard. Each unit, so that means each square, represents one yard. The sod costs $10.80 per square yard. How much will it cost? So, we have the shape of his area that he's going to lay the sod, and we think we need to find the number of square yards by finding the area of his backyard. We separate the composite figure into simpler shapes. So, here we have a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a triangle. We count the number of square units going down and across to use in the formula for base, height, length, width, diameter, or radius. So our shape is separated into a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a triangle. We have the formula for each of those to find their area, and we can count the squares. For the parallelogram, we can think of it as sideways, as if it's turned this way. We can say that the base is 1, 2, 3, and its height is 1, 2. We do 3 times 2, that's 6 yards square, or 6 square yards. For the rectangle, we do length times width. We can do 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 times 5 is 15. For the triangle, we can use the base times the height divided by 2, or half times the base times the height. Same thing. Our base is 1, 2, 3, and our height is 1, 2. We do 3 times 2, which is 6, divided by 2. That gives us 3 yards square for that area. Now we add each area for a total area. We've got 6, 15, and 3. That gives us 24 square yards. Now we're not done. The sod is $10.80 per square yard. So then we multiply the total square yards, the 24, by the cost per square yard. We do $10.80 times 24, and we see that it's going to cost, Dave, $259.20 to sod that area of his backyard. Now take a look at this figure. To find the area of this figure, we can draw a rectangle around it whose sides touch the vertices of the figure. This creates four triangles outside of the original figure. We find the area of each triangle and subtract them from the area of the rectangle. The remaining area, the part that's inside here, will be the area of the original figure. Since it's drawn on grid paper, we can find the area of the rectangle we count the number of squares in the length, the units, and we do the same for the height. We get 14 by 5. We multiply that and get 70 units square. Now we need to do each triangle. So we have triangle 1, 2, 3, and 4. We do each one, and we find triangle 1 is 8 units, triangle 2 is 6 units, triangle 3 is 9 units, and triangle 4 is 12 units. We add the area of the four triangles, 8 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12, is equal to 35 units square. Now, we subtract that 
triangle area, the 35, from the rectangle area, 70. 70 minus 35 is equal to 35 units square for this shape on the inside, for this figure. Now this is a good way to find the area of a figure when we see that it has an irregular shape. Look at how small these little triangular pieces are by this vertex or by this vertex. It's not like it's half of a unit or anything. So this is the most efficient way, an accurate way, to find the area of this figure on the inside. Now take a look at this shape. It's like a stretched out circle, isn't it? Sophia is covering her grandmother's antique dining table with a sheet of glass to protect the finish. Each unit length represents one foot, and the glass costs $5 per square foot. How much will it cost? So we think we can separate this figure into two semicircles, which together make a full circle, and a rectangle. Then we can add to get a total area. The area for a circle is area is equal to pi r squared. We can see here that the radius, if this is the diameter of the circle, the radius is half of that, so we have three units. We do approximately 3.14 for pi times 3 squared. And 3 times 3 is 9, so we have 3.14 times 9, which is approximately 28 and 26 hundredths feet squared. Then for the rectangle, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That gives us 24 feet squared. Now, we add them together, and we get 52 and 26 hundredths square feet. But we're not done. It's $5 per square foot. So we multiply the 52.26 times the $5, and we find out that the glass to cover the antique table is $261.30. As we're doing area of two-dimensional figures, we're going to come across some very irregular, odd shapes. Look at this one. If we actually look at this, we can look at it as a rectangle and subtract the area of a circle. We have a semicircle and a semicircle. That means we're going to subtract the area of one full circle. Now for this one, we find the area of the square, then we find the area of one and a half circles. We can do the area of one full circle and a half circle, and we add them together for a total area. For this one, we find the area of the rectangle, then find the area for one fourth of a circle. So we would use the formula for the area of a circle, and we would just divide it by four to get this one fourth of a circle. And we would add the two areas together to get a total area. We're finished with lesson 9.3, and we're going to be moving on to 9.4, solving surface area problems. We're going to be modeling surface area of a prism. Remember to separate your composite figures into the least amount of simple figures so that you don't have to do as much math. And remember that you can enclose a figure within a rectangle to help find the area. Have a great day, and join me for the next lesson. Bye.